This is an AMT, or Air Motion Transformer. It's a type of driver that works in quite a different way to the more traditional approaches, like dynamic drivers, planar or electrostatic, and recently Head Audio invited me out to Berlin to find out a little bit more about it. Hello. Cameron, it's great to, to have you me. over. Awesome. Welcome to Head. So take me away. Ready. Uh, I'm one of the two founders of the company. The other founder is my father. I'm kind of the, the outward facing figure in the brand. What you see here is actually lined up three-way speakers. Um, this, is, this is the biggest studio monitor we do at the moment called the Type 30. As I said, fully phase aligned with the closed and ported technology. And this here, this is the Type 20, which is a compact three-way and that's kind of the most important product we make in the speaker realm. What was it that made you want to start Head? I wish I had like a romantic story to tell you now, <laughs> but it was actually, I was a freelancing mastering engineer. I had just finished a PhD in, in musicology and my father had just um, left his previous company, Adam Audio. He was all about, let's start a new brand tomorrow. Let's book the domain essentially the, and let's put our products as soon as possible, basically. <laughs> so completely product driven. It's a great day for you to be here. Outside the realm of active studio monitors, we're doing these like raw analog towers that kind of live in between the pro world and the audiophile world. This, for example, is an audiophile customer who requested a custom color. It's almost done, it needs QC now, and that's being wrapped up and sent around the world. Yeah, who are the people that buy you know, these speakers? I don't think my dad knows. Um, but I know, so it felt like we, we, we come from two sides and we want the same thing. The air motion transformer was invented by physicist Oscar Heil, whose resume is impressive to say the least, also having invented a small thing you may have heard of called the field effect transistor, or FET, which is what's allowing me to tell you this information right now. There's probably a few billion of them in the processor in your phone or PC, and maybe a few larger ones in the amplifier running your headphones or speakers. But I was in Berlin to find out more about the AMT itself and HEAD, and so Oscar Hart's business partner and the founder of both HEAD Audio and Adam Audio told me a little bit more about the origins of the technology and one of the first ever speakers to implement it, the ESS AMT-1. Well, I'm Klaus Heinz and I have a long love with loudspeakers and transducers. So this is a, quite a unique looking contraption. Would you be able to tell us a little bit about the history and the origin of the AMT? Yeah, I have to start with the original air motion transformer idea because that's a native in a way. You see a diaphragm with those folds in the middle of an uh, air gap. The air motion transformer uses folded diaphragms where the single fold open and close. You see, this kind of motion is made in an air motion transformer and the air is going from here to there in that model here. An example that Oscar liked to present was the question how to move a cherry pit. You either can take your arm and throw the cherry pit or more effective you can do it that way. So the driven mass of the cherry pit is small. So the cherry pit idea of those membranes plays a vital role in the air motion transformer as such. When this speaker showed up, it was a sensation, I can say. Well, the sound was totally intriguing. It was built only like 120 times uh, uh, because the company ESS closed down due to, from personal reasons. I, I managed to get one of these things and uh, to, to have a, yeah, an idea what else could be done in speaker business. This department is what I would always call the kind of heart and soul department because this is where all the air motion transformers are being built from scratch, literally. Uh, and then also uh, done here is the driver for the HP1 and the HP2. So the HP1 are still in production then, it's not stopping. Yeah, yeah, we, we, wanna, we wanna keep it alive. No other product has made more, I think, for the brand building uh, in the last years. It, it helped us so much also on the speaker front. There was so much like interaction between the, the different audiences. There's a place for the original headphone. And so what was it that made you want to use AMT specifically? 
As you are very young, you didn't experience the kind of attention the principal got when they came up with that thing. It was the listening experience with the AMT1, nothing else. So the AMT works in quite a different way to almost any other approach to an audio transducer. With basically anything else, be it a dynamic driver, a planar magnetic, an electrostatic, or even a ribbon, all of these are just different ways of moving a diaphragm backwards and forwards to push air directly. And the air that you move is moved at exactly the same speed that the driver itself is moving at. So if you want to have a driver that works well at high frequencies and can respond to these fast moving signals, ideally the driver needs to be really lightweight, which is one of the reasons why you often see tweeters made out of materials like beryllium for instance. But with an AMT, because it's not moving backwards and forwards but rather squeezing air out from between the folds, the air isn't moved at a one to one ratio with the driver, but instead at about four times the speed that the driver itself is moving. Can I, can I have a little listen? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Awesome. Like That's like what stands out the most yeah. to me, is just the fact of well, hearing. Ah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Almost like jumps out. It's just yeah. instant. How fast things sound. Yeah. I've only heard in e-stats where you're not moving air one to one. You're moving yeah. air, was it four or five times faster? Yeah. As mentioned before, Oscar Heil was a physicist and he was a very good physicist. Born in 1906 and he was in Göttingen, which was the world capital for physics and mathematics at that point in time. So he worked with all the big guys, uh, whether it must be Mr. Oppenheimer, whose film is actual at the moment. I studied physics as well, and he told me all his past uh, efforts, like inventing the FET transistor, you might have read about that. He had a patent for it, but he didn't make it. And other people who made it seven years later, got the Nobel Prize in physics, so it was something that always hurt at him a lot. <laughs> what we have here is basically an assembling floor um, that is mainly used for uh, speaker assembling. Basically these islands are flexible in the sense that you can build every single product on each island. It's really important that everyone can sort of almost do everything and that way we can move forward quite, quite quickly and, and, and quite flexibly. That's the happy sound. Can we have a little bit of a look at the kind of testing stuff that's going on? Oh yeah, Quite absolutely. a lot of people watching are sort of interested in the, yeah, absolutely. the measurements and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, let's things. go. I can hear uh, something shaking the walls. Come here, my cat's I don't know if, how, how many of your viewers have been through this experience already, but it is, uh, it's quite it is, intense. The sound is literally coming from a single point source yeah. and absolutely nowhere else. It's quite... Uh, quite an interesting experience. Listening to music in here is really not that enjoyable. No. And listening in, uh, to, to a great production in a church is probably also not so, so super enjoyable with, with a ton of reverb. That's a big discussion in, in acoustics and studio acoustics, like how much reverb do you want? But this here is strictly for measurement. Um, you can see here those measuring microphones. Every three-way speaker gets tortured one more time before it's being shipped out. We do a frequency me measurement, we do a phase uh, a measurement, and then also we, we're feeding it with a very aggressive, basically pink noise signal. So every single speaker you guys make is in here, measured on these, and then made sure Absolutely, it's absolutely. It's really crucial. Hey. No? Hello. How's it going? You're on TV. On TV. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Dmitry uh, Grigoriev. I'm the head of uh, research and development at Head Audio. I have been uh, since the start uh, in the development of the Headphone One and Headphone Two, as well as the MK2 series and the Subwoofer series. What was it that kind of stopped you from making a headphone sooner? Maybe a silly answer. I was too shy. The headphone idea was an idea that people talked about like over dinner or something. It would be great at some point. What I have to say that even this very first uh, diaphragm, mm -hmm. I listened to it free air, you know, just to see what would happen. And, and Freddie took the moment with the photograph. And I was, <laughs> I said, Heureka, that was a Heureka moment. The frequency response was all over the place. It sounded completely weird, but it had this, hum I, I remember this voluminous, insane bass showed us that um, we have to do it, we just have to go for it, it's possible. Then it needed some normal R&D work to, to, to make a, a, a headphone out of it. 
and it needed a few experiments with different fold and ratios to, 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 find the, to find the right one. The first headphone had a certain design but was very uh, heavy as you know and, and bulky. We've changed the ear cups so they would actually smoothly go as close as possible to the driver itself. Mm -hmm. At the same time we also wanted to change to 3.5 jacks. Race car engineering, slimming down weight in every little bit that you possibly exactly. can. Exactly, same thing for also the, the metal parts. We've uh, switched from aluminum to uh, magnesium. You know, this is something people that's pressing against people's head. This is something you feel in your hand, on your, on your ears, on your face. Like it, it, there's, there's a whole world of complexity to making a great headphone. Until very recently, AMTs have pretty much exclusively been seen in speakers, and even then, only for the high-frequency tweeters. Head themselves does not use AMTs for the low-frequency drivers in their studio monitors, for instance, and Dimitri explained to me some of the reasons why that's the case. What is it that prevents AMTs in speakers from being used as low-frequency drivers, for example? That's a very good question. <laughs> uh, you need to move a lot of air, so you will have to create folds that are very deep, and very high, and then it becomes difficult to control that. So rather than the driver moving as one, it's sort of starts rippling. move, but it's breaking up. With the tweeters, it's much easier to control because you only go to a certain frequency. You drop off at like let's say uh, two kilohertz. How is it that you guys overcame that challenge with the headphone too? Because that that goes down very low. I mean, at 20 hertz, it's only. 6 dB below what it is at 1 kilohertz or something. Uh, headphone uh, 1 and headphone 2 membrane, the fold geometry is much larger than that of the tweeter. But if you would have to excite it very loudly, you would get into the, these distortions, these uh, partial uh, movements, uh, but with a headphone, you don't need it that loud. Head did not let the challenges get in their way of making an AMT-based headphone. Neither the headphone one or the headphone two use any kind of passive electrical components to tune the frequency response. It is all done via tuning of the driver itself. A motion transformer in headphones is, is an expensive thing to do. There are no machines that magically put them together, so this is all like, very sophisticated hand, manual labor, essentially. Two out of three ladies <laughs> sitting here doing the assembling work. We're gonna get to see one being built. Yeah, you can actually see the manual folding devices that we use. She's bringing together one of the headphone drivers, headphone diaphragms. Um, Tatiana is a trained watchmaker, um, which I love to always mention because the kind of work you do here doesn't Precise. require like a specific yeah. qualification like as in like I want to learn how to make headphones this is not really anything you can do after school so every single headphone driver gets measured in a kind of self-built anechoic chamber uh, just like with the speakers you need a, a place to QC the headphones dürfen wir mal kurz reinpieken hi this is us surprising tim <laughs> sorry to disturb <laughs> He's the main guy behind uh, the headphone QC. He does both. He does the, the final measurement of the pre-assembled headphone, and he's also doing the listening tests um, before we uh, decide that a headphone is, is ready to be shipped out. So I've got to ask, do you have a particular track that you usually put on first when you're testing a headphone? Nowadays, it's uh, like a more jazzy thing, like um, Todd Gustafsson Trio with Carmosin. It's a very open space. You can you can hear like um, all the reverb, all the re early reflections of the room, and it's it's super dynamic from going super low to really crashing cymbals, and that's a uh, quite good uh, signal to to check these um, headphones too. Yeah. Yeah. So this here is essentially um, it's it's a stock of components. Uh, we do have a, um, a separate warehouse. And, uh, what you see here is essentially everything we would bring together in the coming days. They're not particularly compact uh, units as well. It yeah, seems like you've exactly. got quite large and so, heavy yeah, shipments so going out. Yeah, it's not the most exciting part of, of running a, a hardware business, but it's, it's of crucial importance, <laughs> obviously. What are your sort of future goals for the company as a whole? The momentum that we have now, which is very much like a headphone momentum and not so much a speaker momentum, I would say that evolving into a leading edge headphone manufacturer over the next, quite fast, like over the next maybe three years five to five years, that's one of the biggest goals we have. We need more products, we need to have products on different price points. I would love to 
had to be perceived as a super serious, you know, the best headphone manufacturer out there. I really, really hope that people see uh, in Headphone 2 more than just like a pro audio headphone that could potentially be interesting for a few audiophiles. It's really meant to live in both these worlds. Air motion transformers are a unique and fascinating way of approaching audio transducers, with quite different properties from what you get from more traditional approaches like dynamic drivers. There are a lot of people that absolutely swear by them, and in my personal opinion, the resolution and detail offered by headphones like the Headphone 2 is only matched by electrostatic headphones, and I'm very excited to see what Head comes up with next. One thing, so we've got quite a few viewers who are very into in-ear monitors. When can we see an AMT AIM from Head? I mean, it would be a lie if I would say we've never talked about it. <laughs> Obviously, it would have to work on, on an economical scale for us um, because we're not a, a huge company that has, you know, millions on the bank and we can try like 10 things and see what two things kind of work. You know, that's, that's, that's not what we are at this point. But I would say it's still in the state of being a lab discussion, something we, we call a head lab essentially, where we're just basically brainstorming ideas exchange thoughts on, on cool things that we saw in the market and you know bring in our own ideas and then from time to time we see how you know, how we how we stand with these discussions and what we could eventually take out and, and turn into a prototype. Are you able to tell us anything about any of those ideas that might have made it out of the lab? I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> so it's unlikely that we'll see low frequency AMT speakers in the future for example, but headphones it's it's quite clearly doable. We'll see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not excluding that possibility. <laughs> I learned a lot and had a fantastic time visiting Head, and there were a number of surprises as well. The fact that every single driver that goes into the Headphone 1 and 2 is handmade and is tuned with a really precisely controlled fold depth as you move across the driver is kind of wild. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in a headphone for yourself, head to the link in the description. And if you've got any questions about the Air Motion Transformer, gear, music, or anything else at all, head to the headphones.com Discord server or the headphones.com forum, and I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavor to help. I'm Golden Sound. You're watching The Headphone Show by headphones.com. Thank you very much to Head Audio for inviting me out to Berlin. I'll see you next time.